What's up everyone? This is Anthony Kim and today I talked to Alicia Henderson who's an old friend and now a superintendent in Washington State and we talk about servant leadership and in particular we talk about the seven pillars of servant leadership. So I'm going to walk you through the seven pillars and then we'll go straight into the interview. Uh, the first pillar is a person of character. The second pillar is put people first. The third is communications. The fourth is collaboration. The fifth is has foresight. The sixth is systems thinking. And the seventh is lead with moral authority. So she describes how she applies these seven pillars in the context of a school district. Check it out and I'll see you on the other side. Thank you so much, Alicia, for joining me from Washington. And I'm excited to have this conversation with you about leadership. And in particular, I think um, I was first introduced to servant leadership through one of our board members who also comes from Washington, Howard Behar, who uh, was one of the founders of uh, Starbucks and president of Starbucks for a while. So um, I'd love to just talk you through some of the um, seven pillars of servant leadership and see how you can kind of form formulate these concepts into your situation and in education specifically for our education audience. So I think the first one is just, uh, it's called person of character, making ethical and principle centered decisions, maintains integrity, demonstrates humility, serves higher purpose. I feel like there's so much of that in education already, but how does that manifest itself in, edu in school systems? I think on a daily basis, and it really requires what I found is to keep my feet on the ground all the time, even um, through very difficult, stressful times, is to keep my bearings of the true north of what am I doing? Why am I here? What is the purpose? What is the mission? Um, and not get sidetracked from that, um, the, 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 the true north that, that uh, so it's so easy to be distracted and to veer off course. So I guess I would say, you know, walk the talk, um, be grounded and um, be disciplined to say no when you see yourself or you, and you need to monitor that. Uh, when your words or actions um, are veer veering away from the true north. How, how would you describe what your true north is in your current role? You know, as superintendent of a school district that's been undergoing some major financial challenges in the past two years as a result of the changes in our funding model in Washington, I would say that um, servant leadership is really uh, seeing myself as critical to keeping the district afloat, quite frankly, uh, you know, fiscally solvent through this period of time. And um, at the same time, I mean, keeping the organization afloat at the same time, providing a quality education for kids. And those are both big, big jobs. So, and, and so the servant leadership is what does the community want? They want this district to survive. They want their children to be well educated. And that is my job. That mm -hmm. is my only job. So the next pillar is put people first, uh, show care and concern, help others meet their goals, help others grow. And I know for education elements, our, our tagline is schools grow when people grow. So and of course, like schools and school districts, any organization it's not a thing, it's a group of people. So how does that manifest? Because I, I think the challenge I also see in school systems is there's just not a lot of space for that, especially with union contracts and, and such. The limits on PD time is it's mm. tough. Yeah, I'd say there's, there's a couple, there's a lot to say about um, investing in your people. And some of it is formal, like you said, in um, formalized professional development that is consistent with you know, union contracts and, and that, as well as, oh my gosh, I'll, I'll tell you that the, the, the most challenging part about providing professional development to the whole group of employees is just the many mandates that we have for things that are requirements and not necessarily things that are highest priority in terms of the organization. But then on a more individual level, I've really moved towards um, individualizing support for for the members of an organization in multiple ways by establishing um, collaborative work groups that are job alike 
throughout the district and um, allowing them opportunity and time and space to work together to develop. And then with an open line of communication to me, like what do, what do they need? Pillar number three, skilled communicator. So skilled communicator says, uh, listens earnestly, demonstrates empathy, invites feedback, communicates persuasively. And it feels like, especially now with, you know, return plans and hybrid and in and out and COVID and all of this, like communications is so critical. How have that, like, how has that like manifested itself in, you know, recent months? And I run things by people a lot. That's what I find to be also very, very helpful is drafting things and sharing them with people for feedback. So I reach out to people with phone calls, <laughs> try to keep the lines communication open. I'll tell you one thing I've thought is that for somebody starting in a leadership position without having the relationships prior to the pandemic, I think they would be at a huge disadvantage. So I think that brings me to the next pillar, which is a compassionate collaborator. And, and you talked about sharing early and sharing often and getting feedback. Uh, so some of the points that they describe here is, you know, strengthens relationships, supports diversity, creates belonging, expresses appreciations, negotiates conflict. And, you know, I think in education, like people do a lot of that, but it's, I, it's, I would guess, especially now with the pandemic, politics, ec economic issues, uh, social justice issues, that is, negotiating conflicts very complicated. It is. Yeah, it is. And uh, all, uh, fortunately, we went into this pandemic, all of us, with collab tools for collaboration that we didn't have 10 years ago. And mm. so obviously, being able to have multiple iterations of a single document within, mm -hmm. you know, an hour has been brilliant. And we work, uh, I, you know, in my district, and I think probably most districts now, work pretty collaboratively on multiple, you know, efforts and mm -hmm. initiatives. And then having um, teamwork using an accordion model of teams going together, sharing information, bringing it back and utilizing some, some structures like that kind of helps to formalize the collaborative process and ensuring on my part to ensure that I bring in diverse views yeah, so that gets me right to the next point, which is uh, the fifth pillar, which is has foresight. And I think the way it's described here is it imagines possibilities, anticipates the future, proceeds with clarity of purpose, visionary, takes courage and decisive actions. And sometimes when we're collaborating, it's actually quite hard to have a vision and, you know, agree on what decisions need to be made by when. So how does that play out in, in a school environment? You know, in many ways, I know a lot of schools have the same mission and purpose, but the prioritization and the decision making from district to district is very different. Establishing a shared vision, I, I feel that that's, that's an important for me to establish with my leadership team, especially our shared vision and with my board. Where are we going and what is our collective vision that we all share together? And sometimes the priority of, the, of, the, of that leadership team um, shapes my own. And certainly my board's vision is um, the ultimate direction of the district. So, mm -hmm. so I have to be in my servant leadership. I have to be amenable to, to moving in that direction. And so far, it's been a great place here. It's all worked Pillar six is really like, it, it's about system thinking and it says, uh, thinks and acts strategically, leads effectively, balances the whole within the sum of parts, comfortable with complexity, demonstrates adaptability, considers the greater good. Well, one of the things I do, uh, I'm curious about, because I know you're deep into it, but I find that uh, sometimes you might w walk into team structures where they're not quite there yet, right? And so... What have you learned in terms of bringing people along on starting to think more um, in a systems way as opposed to often the tactical things that people get so caught up in? Let's just take principles because they're kind of 
you know, the captains of your ship. And so with principals, I, when I attend staff meetings or attend some type of a new, something where I, I'm with principals, and certainly when we have our, our, our principal meetings, I listen for how they think and talk about their system, because every school is a system. Mm -hmm. And all the players and all the pieces and all the component parts of a school, it's a little organism. It's kind of like the district that is an organism at a different level. So I work closely with them on ensuring that our conversations always talk about how things relate to each other and how one thing affects something else. And then how to anticipate second order effects of actions that are taken. And also being clear of a strategic uh, direction and being clear also with goals. I like what you said about uh, principals being captains. So it kind of, when you said that, it reminded me of like a fleet of boats. Oh yeah. Right, and you're trying to get all these boats kind of moving in the same direction. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, and you know, in, in the Navy, I guess the um, aircraft carrier also plays, it's kind of like the central office, I guess, because you have all these planes that kind of fly out and do all these things, but you're always communicating with other boats. But what I couldn't um, kind of connect the dots on is like those people on the boats like know very well like what their roles are and they are like practiced in it and they know how to do the handoffs pretty well and then even across the fleet they know which piece which boat all have they all have like different roles and they know how to like create a formation and what i haven't really gotten a good picture around is like what is the formation of a district yeah, well, obviously you're you're moving forward in a direction that is the shared vision. And so that's why you mm -hmm. got to have your principals on the same page. And I communicate pretty closely with them and all of the district leaders to ensure that our boats are going in the right direction. Yeah. And that's a really good analogy of having a fleet going in the same direction. And then, um, you know, me and my role uh, as a superintendent is, is always to facilitate them to stay on course and to help them uh, to, you know, see the landmines out there and also the, the, the distractions that get them off course and to help reel them in and help them, you know, um, continue moving forward. Because the organization is the sum of the whole. It can't be, uh, you know, yeah spirit group of independent um, entrepreneurs, the organization then just dissipates its, um, you know, its, its movement forward. So the seventh pillar is leads with moral authority and, uh, you know, the descriptors are worthy of respect, inspires trust and confidence, establishes quality standards, accepts and delegates responsibility, creates a culture of accountability. This last bullet, you know, creates a culture of accountability that's been in education like everywhere, <laughs> but it, it's been hard to implement right. in a way people feel motivated. Yeah, and, and this is important because um, in a position of leadership, you're constantly being evaluated. Everything you say, everything you do, everything everywhere you look, everything you wear, <laughs> everything is evaluated. And I take that seriously um, as the head of the organization to represent the organization well and model what, um, what I believe my board uh, wants in a leader and the community wants in a leader. And um, I'm very mindful about that. You know, being a public figure like this, it, it does take away a lot of privacy and uh, that's something that isn't always easy. Uh, it's part of the gig, and I think you have to take it seriously. I hope you enjoyed that interview. I think when I think about servant leadership, what really stuck out to me in this conversation was that fleet analogy we talked about, how we're trying to move all these ships uh, in the same direction. And she talked early about the kind of having the true north, the North Star. and so. I talk a little bit about this in terms of just like being clear on your purpose and vision and uh, understanding what your North Star is so that you are unwavering in the direction that you're trying to go, yet bringing people along and making sure that you're also looking at other conditions so that you can navigate the water. So hope you enjoyed that conversation and I'll see you at the next one. Peace.